I think we need to make sure. There we go. Debbie Scott, if we could swear in the witness. Ms. Yurdy, can you hear us? Yes, I can. All right. Raise your right hand down. You swear up front to the testimony that you get a court, will be the truth. That's what truth will help you. Yes. Would you please state and spell your full name for the court? Robin Latrice Yurdy. Thank you, Ms. Yurdy. Um, thank you for being here. Can you can you tell the judge um, when you first met Ms. Willis? Um, in college. Okay. So nineteen, probably ninety or ninety-one. Okay. And have you been friends since nineteen ninety or ninety-one? Yes. Okay. Um, when was the last time you spoke with Ms. Willis? Um, March of twenty, March of twenty twenty two. Okay. Um, from nineteen ninety one ish till twenty twenty two, were you what you would consider good friends with Ms. Willis? Yes. Um, and did you all share personal information regularly? Yes. And. Um, did you even come and work with her at the DA's office? Yes. And um, when she needed a place to stay, um, did you let her stay at your apartment? Your, um, yes. uh, it was a condo, right? Condo, yes. Okay. Do you remember approximately when she moved into your condo? Um, it was April of 2021. Okay, great. And. Um, you know that Ms. Willis and Ms. Wade met at a conference in October of 2019? I'm going to object to that, Your Honor, without a foundation for how this witness would know that. If Ms. Merchant can establish he has personal information of that, then um, certainly that's something the witness can testify to. But if it's she heard Understood, it, Ms. Ms. Cross. All right, Ms. Uh, Merchant, if you could lay the foundation. Do you have information that Ms. Willis and Mr. Wade met in October of 2019. I'm going to renew my objection, Your Honor. Information is not sourced to personal information. If the question can be rephrased, then that may address my concern. So, so Judge, I, let me. I just want to make sure that I understand. So, they've objected to me calling Willis and Wade. It's just, it's just a matter of foundation. If you can just rephrase. Do you have knowledge of when Willis and Wade met? I, I'm going to object again. Personal knowledge. Uh, overruled. Thank you. Do you have personal knowledge of when Willis and Wade met? Yes. She told me that they met at a conference. I don't know what conference. Okay. I'm going to renew my objection, Your Honor. Clearly, this is not first-hand information from this uh, witness. It's hearsay that was... Uh, but you said she told me. Yes, it's it's statement against interest, Judge. If Ms. Well, Willis... Just pause. I'm sorry. Okay, Ms. Yes. Cross. The representation of the witness, the testimony of the witness, was that Ms. Willis, District Attorney Willis, had a conversation with her. There is no statement against interest. District Attorney Willis is not a, a party opponent in this case. The information that the witness has testified to came from Ms. Willis, and there's uh, we have a hearsay objection to that. Why wouldn't she be considered a, a party opponent in this context? She is a representative of the state, Your Honor. This isn't private litigation or civil litigation. Obviously, the, the, the court's aware this is... Um, Ms. Willis is not on trial. Ms. Willis has not is not a party to the litigation outside her obligation to pursue criminal charges for the state. Ms. Merchant, I judge, guess I guess it's, it's it's evolved into a hearsay objection. Yes, Judge, and um, we plan on calling Ms. Willis to the stand. She's under subpoena, so hearsay will be cured uh, if there is a hearsay objection as to far as that issue. But we do still think that it's a statement against interest. Um, Ms. Willis has filed a document that states that they met at this municipal court conference. So I'm, Your Honor, <laughs> I think maybe I can streamline a little bit. State will stipulate that District Attorney Willis and uh, Mr. Wade met in October 2019 at the judicial conference that we've been talking about. There's no reason to get it secondhand from this witness. Well, well that's, that's true. All right, you accept the stipulation, Ms. Merchant? Yes. All right. Am I permitted then to, to ask questions about that since it's now not hearsay? Uh, if it's just to a stipulation, if it's just to that basic fact, I, I don't think we need a question, but if there's a follow-up that okay. you think is admissible, go for it. Ms. Yerdy, um, you have personal knowledge that Ms. Willis and Mr. Wade began their romantic relationship soon after this 
time that they met at the municipal court? I'm going to object to that question. That certainly is a leading question. No foundation has been laid for how this witness would have personal knowledge of that. And until that's happened, the state objects. Judge. I think you can do a yes or no and then follow up with how she knows it. Thank you. Um, do you know if Ms. Willis and Mr. Wade started dating in October of 2019? I don't know if it was October of 2019. Could it possibly be November of 2019? Could possibly. Okay. And when we spoke, you said it was shortly after the municipal court conference, though, correct? Yes. Okay. So you know that their relationship, their personal relationship, began shortly after this municipal court conference? Yes. And when I say personal, romantic. Is that, is, I just want to make sure we don't get in an argument over what personal and romantic is later. When I ask you personal, do you take that to mean romantic? Yes. Okay. And do you understand it, that their relationship began in 2019 and continued until the last time you spoke with her? Yes. And you were essentially her best friend during this time, right? Not best friend, good friend. Good friend, okay, close friend. And so would you frequently socialize with her? Yes. Okay. Um, and you saw her at work every day? Yes. So you had a chance to see them interact together on a personal level? Yes. Um, and so from everything that you saw, heard, witnessed, um, it's your understanding that they were in a romantic relationship beginning in 2019? Yes. And um, when you left the DA, oh, I'm sorry, let me ask you. Um, you said that Ms. Willis came to live with you in April of 2021. I'm sorry, April 1st, 2020 or 2021? She didn't live. I never, I never lived. Okay, I'm sorry. She took over your lease in April, April 1st, 2020, correct? No, 2021. 20, okay, I'm fed. I had it both ways, so I'm glad you clarified. So when she took over your lease in April 1st, 2021, it's your understanding she moved out of the house that she was sharing with her father and started staying at the condo? Yes. And is it your understanding that that's because she needed to have her own space? Yes. Away from her father? Yes. Okay. Um, when you left the DA's office, was it, um, were you fired? No, I resigned. You resigned, okay. Just one moment, sir. <laughs> um, can you tell us why you resigned the DA's office? Um the number of things that was happening a number of things that were happening is that what you said ma'am yes okay what what was happening that you that caused you to resign um it was a spiral of things so um i guess the the last straw is i was, I was put in a department that I knew had no knowledge about something happened and I didn't like it they didn't like it and that was it okay did you have any falling outs with Miss Willis well we never spoke after that you never spoke after that okay um and so you're you know, without going into all the, the painstaking details, there is no doubt in your mind that from 2019 until 2022, um, Ms. Willis and Mr. Wade were in a romantic relationship. What's the question? Um, you have no doubt that their romantic relationship was in effect from 2019 until the last time you spoke with her. No doubt. Okay. And that's based on your personal observations and, obser and you know, speaking with them and seeing them together and things like that. Yes. Okay. No other questions. Thank you. The other uh, the other folks may have some questions for you, Mr. Yardy. Mr. Sato. You want me to go to the uh, uh, If it's more I than a couple speak. questions, then sure. But if not, it's only a couple. Questions. Okay. I think can the court reporter hear me okay? 
Uh, so ma'am, let me be very specific. Did you talk with Miss Willis about her romantic relationship with Mr. Wade? Yes. Did Miss Willis tell you on more than one occasion that she was engaged in a romantic relationship with Mr. Wade prior to you leaving the district attorney's office? Did she tell me or did I observe? Let's go. I'm straight right now with the tell me. Yes. Did she tell you that in the year of 2020? Yes. In the year of 2021? Yes. Are you certain that Ms. Wade told you, I'm sorry, Ms. Willis told you about the romantic relationship with Mr. Wade prior to November 1st of 2021? Yes. Now, did you also have observations of Mr. Wade and Ms. Willis together prior to November 1st of 2021? Yes. And are those observations, were those in a social setting? Yes. And did you observe them do things that are uh, in common among people having a romantic relationship? Yes. Such as, can you give us an example? Hugging, kissing, this all, affection. All, of, all before November 1st of 2021, correct? Yes. That's all I have. Mr. Stocks. Ma'am, did I understand you to say that, that there was a period of time when you and Ms. Willis lived together? No. Mr. Durham? No, nothing for me, Your Honor. Mr. McDougall? Nothing, Your Honor. Mr. Rice? Good morning, Ms. Yardy. Um, are you, were you aware in 2021 of any trips, social trips, that Ms. Willis and Mr. Wade took together? No. Are you aware of any social trips that Ms. Willis and Mr. Wade took together in 2022? No. And are you aware of them in 2020 or 2021 spending the evening together overnight? No. No further Mr. Gillen. No Mr. McCullough. And Mr. Cromwell. No questions, Your Honor. Ms. Cross. I do have some questions. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Yurdy, we haven't met before. Is that correct? Correct. You're able to see and hear me okay? Yes. All right. I want to start with a couple things. Now, I think you've made it, it clear that you never lived, and we'll call it the South Fulton address, the South Fulton condo that you were leasing. You never lived at that address with the District Attorney Willis, correct? Correct. And never at any time? Never. All right. You never observed or have any information about District Attorney Wade and District Attorney Willis and Nathan Wade living together, correct? Correct. You don't have any information about that? No, I don't. Anybody said that that information was sourced to you, then that's incorrect? That's incorrect. Did District Attorney Willis pay rent at that establishment, at that condo while, you, while she lived there and you were living elsewhere? Yes. Who paid the rent? She did. Nathan Wade ever pay the rent? No. And you never told anyone otherwise? I didn't answer. I didn't hear your answer there, Ms. Yardy. Did you ever tell anyone uh, otherwise? No. All right. So let's talk for a second about your time at the district attorney's office. You were disciplined several times in the district attorney's office during your employment there, correct? No. You weren't written up ever for poor performance, Ms. Yardy? Once, not several. One time you were written up for poor performance where you counseled several times about your performance in the district attorney's office that was subpar. No. Did the district attorney tell you that your performance was insufficient and that you were going to be fired? No. That never happened? No. Maybe when we were at the end, mm, What's the question? 
The question, Ms. Yurdy, was did the district attorney ever counsel you on your poor performance in the district attorney's office uh, prior and inform you that you were going to be fired? I don't really know how to answer that. I'm looking for the truth. I, I, I don't really know how to answer that. I mean, uh, a situation happened that wasn't my fault. And I, I either was going to resign or be let go. So You understood that that was the situation. You could resign or you could be let go. Correct, yes. You were not welcome to stay. No. And the conversation where you were informed that you could resign or you could be fired, uh, that conversation was not the first conversation you had with the district attorney about your poor performance in the office, correct? Well, it was kind of a spiral, but no. Yeah, it was. Whatever the situation was... Questions are Understood, Mr. Stano. Ms. You. Cross. Ms. Yurdy, the circumstances of your leaving the district attorney's office uh, ended your friendship with the district attorney Willis, correct? Yes. Y'all haven't spoken since? No. All right, I want to talk about the representations that you made here um, this morning, Ms. Yurdy, about any relationship between District Attorney Willis and Mr. Wade. I want you to tell me what was the first time any, let me ask it this way. You said that District Attorney Willis personally informed you of a romantic relationship. Is that what you testified to? Yes. And when did that conversation that you purport to have, uh, to recall, when did that happen? I mean, I don't have a month. Or, or a day, Where were you? just talking, just talking in general. Your Honor, you'd like to keep this witness under um, subpoena, but that's all the questions I have right now. All right, thank you, Ms. Cross. I have to recross that. I mean, redirect, I'm sorry. All right, on those points only. Yes, just those points. Um, the state asked you a lot about um, when you were let go, when you resigned. Um, did something happen as far as um, purchasing that you didn't feel comfortable with, purchasing things through um, the county for Ms. Willis that caused you to, to not be comfortable working there anymore? No. Um, and I didn't tell you how to testify here today though, right? Right. Okay. And everything you've testified to is from your personal knowledge? Yes. Okay. And um, you've told the truth here today? Yes. Okay. Um, Judge, I believe she's only under my subpoena, and I'm fine releasing her from that subpoena. Well, not yet. Oh, I'm sorry. By, sh by show of hands from other counsel, starting with Mr. Sado. Your Honor, I believe the door has been opened out to ask this particular witness about statements that um, Ms. Willis made to her. Um, she brought it up on cross-examination on a couple of occasions. Did Ms. Willis say this or inform you of that? So I'd like to now ask her questions directly about what Ms. Willis told her about her romantic relationship. I think we'll take those one at a time, question by question, and we can address those to see. I don't, I don't know about a complete opening of the door. We'll, we'll see where we go. The first time that you spoke to Ms. Willis about her relationship, romantic relationship with Mr. Wade, do you happen to remember what Ms. Willis said? In essence, not word for word, but in essence, what she said. No. Do you remember the first time she told you, in whatever words were used, that there was a romantic relationship? No. Is this the kind of conversation that you had with your best friend uh, ongoing over a period of time in which it was common knowledge to you that there was an ongoing relationship between Ms. Wills and Mr. Wade? What's the question? Yeah, I'll ask it again. Is the nature of your then relationship with Ms. Willis such that you were having these ongoing conversations, that is, best friend type conversations about her relationship with Mr. Wade? I don't remember. Okay. Without getting any further into too much detail, is there any doubt at all 
that Mr. Wade and Ms. Willis had a romantic relationship, as was told to you, prior to November of 2020. Uh, she, she was already asked that question by Ms. Merchant. I just didn't know whether that needed to be she said, and She said no, no doubt. No doubt. All right. Uh, any other defense counsel by show of hands? Seeing none, uh, uh, last recross from Ms. Cross. Anything else? Uh, not this time, Your Honor, but we'd ask okay. the witness remain under subpoena and subject to recall. Judge, she's under my subpoena, and I'm releasing her from my subpoena. So if they want to subpoena her, they're welcome to do that. Ms. Cross. Uh, I would prefer that the court keep her under subpoena. Yeah, I think, sure. uh, given the representation of Ms. Marchant, given how she intends to proceed today, that this witness may, uh, may need to be recalled. All right. Uh, understood. Um, in the interest and knowing that we may have to bring witnesses back and forth, uh, I think it's in the interest of effective presentation of the evidence here, Ms. Yerdy, you are still going to remain under the auspices of your subpoena. And so please stay in touch with your attorney. We may need you to rejoin us on Zoom at some point today or tomorrow. Understood? Okay. All right. Don't discuss your testimony with any other potential witnesses, all right? All right. All right. You can log off. And Judge, I'd ask, just can Mr. Partridge stay on for just one moment? For what reason? Um, the state made some allegations that I misrepresented some things to the court, and I, I'd just like the opportunity to clear that up, that Mr. Partridge is the one that told me that they lived together for a month. They've, they've called me everything but a liar today, and so I just think that it's appropriate for everyone to know where that information came from. All right, Ms. Merchant, I think you've uh, made your position clear. That's, uh, I don't think we want to need to get okay. sidetracked on that. All right, uh, Ms. Merchant, you can call your next witness. 